it's time to turn up your speakers, because today's challenge is to only whisper for a whole week. Just how annoying can we make life for your favorite lab rat, especially when $5,000 is on the line? Let's find out. The producers of the infographic show clearly have a twisted sense of humor. For over a year now, all of us have been annoyed trying to have conversations with people while wearing our masks. Pretty sure we've all been to a point of just saying screw it and staying quiet, because trying to have a conversation anywhere that wasn't deathly silent basically turned into a mumbled mess. So how funny is it to make me whisper for an entire week? Well, I got my vaccine, and by the way, you should too, and all those Bill Gates nanobots in my bloodstream have made my Wi-Fi hum. A lot of places are now letting people not wear a mask in public if they got their vaccine. Unfortunately, most shops still want you to wear a mask, so right away I knew the communication was going to be a hell of a problem. This challenge is different, however, because once more there's a cash prize on the line. $5,000 or $1,000 per successful challenge. Day 1 and Challenge 1. And we already started out on a bad note. I had to go to T-Mobile and open up a new phone account while, of course, whispering. Now, my feelings on T-Mobile are not secret. I think they're the single worst provider of cellular telephone service that has ever or will ever exist. They are a company founded on one single principle, taking the convenience and wonder of modern global cellular communications and making that experience as terrible as possible. Then they charge you for it. But with a thousand bucks on the line, I was game. So I went to a T-Mobile store and passed through the front door to leave the earth behind and enter Shayok, the shadowy realm of the hellish torments that is T-Mobile's home plane of existence. Staying six feet apart proved to be a real pain in what was already a terrible experience, until finally I think the poor employee who must have had no other option but sell his soul to Satan and work at T-Mobile finally gave up on social distancing and came up close to me so he could actually understand my mumbled whispers from behind the mask. On one hand, by making this whole experience so long and difficult, it meant other customers couldn't be serviced and thus I was causing T-Mobile to lose money. Small victory. On the other, I don't know if these employees work on commissions or something like it or if T-Mobile simply rewards them by vomiting sustenance directly into their mouths. If they do work on commission, I felt bad for costing this guy business. Either way, after, I kid you not, two hours I was finally all set up with a new phone line that the infographic show was going to be immediately responsible for paying all the cancellation fees on. Cha-ching! 1K in my pocket, so to speak. Next challenge was a devilishly good one, even by infographic standards. When I opened the envelope and read it, I could not help but sigh at the evil ingenuity of the producers at the infographic show. My second challenge was simple. I had to place a to-go order at a restaurant. No big deal, right? Except this was Brian's Pit Barbecue at the Farmer's Market in the Grove. If you're familiar with LA, then you know that Angelinos go insane over farmer's markets. So even with COVID winding down, this place was still packed and loud. I knew I smelled trouble the moment I opened the envelope. So the girlfriend and I headed to the Grove and found the barbecue place. Now, normally barbecue makes my mouth water just thinking about it, but I'm going to be honest here. California is great for a lot of things but not so much for its barbecue. However, when I saw the crowds in the busy restaurant, I knew this was going to be a hell of a challenge. It should have been simple. Order a barbecue beef brisket plate with a side order of steamed rice, barbecue beans, baked potato, barbecue potato, sauerkraut, coleslaw, baked yam, and potato salad. I'm not sure, but I think it was literally every side on the menu. In order to succeed, I had to get every single side so they had to get my order accurately. So I tried whispering as loud as possible through a mask with the dull roar of a farmer's market going on around us. Now, I've never been to this place before, but I've heard that their customer service is excellent, and I gotta vouch for that. The guy was doing his damnedest to take my order, really honestly tried hard to help. But I could tell people waiting to place their own orders were starting to get all pitchforks and torches. Finally, the guy just slid over a small notepad and a pen. Maybe it wasn't exactly a completely legit victory, but 15 minutes later I had a plate of barbecue and sides galore to enjoy. Plus another 1K from the infographic show, and I avoided getting lynched by a mob. Alright, challenge 3, and this one set a new bar for annoyance. Next, I had to go the whole day speaking but not making a sound. That's, well, not the opposite of whispering, but pretty close to it. Infographics expected me to go to the grocery store, make an appointment at Apple, and shop for something, and order from a freaking Jamba Juice, all while not actually speaking, merely pretending to. I figured the grocery store was a good place to start. Obviously, talking to strangers is an absolute insane thing to do in a public setting, so I really ran into problems when I got to the cashier. Normally, they just say a casual hello, was everything okay, would you like your receipt? All simple things that a nice friendly nod or shake of the head can take care of, and exactly what I was hoping for. But no, thanks to whatever voodoo black magic deal the infographic show has carried out with the evil spirits, there was an issue with my groceries. 
I got in a bag of trail mix, the type you pour yourself, but apparently the code was wrong and the computer wasn't recognizing it. The cashier tried to ask me which trail mix exactly I'd gotten, but of course I couldn't speak. She couldn't even read my lips because, you know, mask. So she tried to communicate the different types of trail mix in an attempt to get me to identify the right one that I'd gotten. Turns out she didn't know all their different kinds either. For the cherry on top, the store was understaffed, so nobody could simply go and quickly check. Right about when the people in line behind me were once more getting all pitchforks and torches, she just ended up taking my bag with her and going to check physically on the shelf. I was determined, so I headed to Apple next, knowing full well what a pain in the ass that was going to be. However, the employees I was trying to communicate with actually surprised me by just pulling out one of their tablets and having me type directly on it. Now that's smart thinking, Apple. Next was Jamba Juice, a place I normally wouldn't step foot in because juices are dumb. Now, I could just carry a pad of paper with me or type things out on my phone, but that's against the spirit of the challenge. So I engaged in a complicated performance of gesturing and pointing at various items, fruits, pictures, etc. to convey my message and definitely got the wrong juice. Challenge didn't say I had to get the right juice this time though, so as far as I'm concerned, challenge completed. As soon as I opened challenge 4, I knew this one might end up getting me tasered or arrested. Day 4 Challenge 4, and this time, I had to go to various places and whisper things directly into people's ears. To their credit, Infographic Show didn't put anything on the list that would be immediately creepy or offensive. But even the most innocuous statement can run screaming into a full-blown creep territory when you're literally whispering into someone's ear. Alright, first up I was going to go to the park. It was simple. I just had to ask someone if I could sit on the bench with them. See, nothing difficult, right? I spotted a bench with a girl sitting down reading a book. She had her dog on a leash with her, and the dog was just chilling, so I thought trying to do this with a guy might get me punched, so girls were probably a better option. I came up to her, I made a gesture at my throat, hopefully to make her think something was physically wrong with me, and then leaned in close and whispered, can I sit here with you? Even with her wearing a mask, I could see the immediate level 10 discomfort I had just generated, and her dog started staring at me like I was a murderer about the strike. She quickly nodded out of politeness, I'm guessing, but literally stood up and left after like 30 seconds. If you're watching this park bench girl, I am so deeply sorry. Next I had to go to the gym. I already knew this was going to be big trouble. Challenge? Simple. Ask to use the machine next to someone. But of course I had to whisper it directly into someone's ear. I wandered the gym for a bit, looking for a guy who if he punched me right away at least it wouldn't be completely devastating. I figured doing this to a girl would be a major no-no because girls already deal with enough crap from gym guys and their guard is up a thousand percent. Seriously guys, girls do not want to be hit on while they're soaked in sweat and physically exhausted. I cannot stress this enough. So I spotted an older guy on the treadmill and I left at the opportunity. I could take a punch from an old guy no problem. I got up on the treadmill next to him, I leaned way over and I whispered right into his ear, mind if I use this machine? The guy practically jumped out of his skin and immediately stared at me like I had grown an extra head. This caused him to lose his footing which almost made him fall off the treadmill and shatter his boomer bones like glass. He slammed the emergency stop and got off the machine muttering things at me that I can't repeat here because this is a family friendly channel. Next up it was time to be helpful, except in the creepiest way possible. All I had to do was find someone carrying heavy bags and ask them if I could help them carry them. What a wonderful nice thing to do for a stranger. Unless you're whispering it directly into their ear like you're a maniac that wants to wear their skin. And that's pretty much exactly how it went. I headed over to a nearby Home Depot style store because I figured people would be carrying heavy things out of there and I waited for an opportunity. Didn't take long. Lady walked out of the store carrying a bag and several pieces of long plywood under her other arm. To her credit, she was making it work, but I could tell she was genuinely struggling, so I made myself useful. Came up to her and I leaned in close enough to violate every inch of her personal space and then whispered to offer my help to carry her stuff. She actually swung around in disgust and nailed me with the plywood she was carrying, then threatened to hit me again if I didn't back off. Fair enough, I fled the scene and headed for my final mini challenge. One that might for sure cement the possibility of me getting arrested. Once more it was simple. Go to a coffee shop or a restaurant and ask a stranger if what they're enjoying tasted good. But of course I had to ask it by whispering it directly into their ear from a few inches away. I settled on a coffee shop because after my last encounter I thought coffee shop people may be less violent. I didn't even wait on this one, I decided the best thing to do was bite the bullet and just walk up to someone on the patio and ask them. The girlfriend insisted on joining me for this one because she'd been busy earlier but told me she'd been howling in laughter when I texted her my escapades. This final challenge though she wanted to see for herself. So I left her in the car as I walked over to the patio area of a coffee shop. There was a girl in a striped shirt enjoying a nice iced coffee. I headed in her direction. Seemed like a nice girl, probably an artsy type, probably a decent human being, 
definitely not someone who deserved what came next. I leaned over as she began sipping her coffee, and with me close enough that my warm breath definitely fogged up her ear, I asked, is that as delicious as it looks? In a word, what happened next was pandemonium. The girl immediately began choking on her iced coffee, and the choking made her blow out really hard and right into the straw of her drink, which basically caused the coffee to explode all over her. Now, simultaneously, the sudden and very loud choking and coughing, the explosion of coffee, scared the bejesus out of the chihuahua sitting on the lap of its owner one table over. Chihuahuas basically exist in a state of constant borderline terror, and this panicked chihuahua leapt away from the choking girl and up onto the table where the owners were enjoying a nice conversation. The dog knocked over one of the coffees on their table, which ended up going all over the guy's lap. This guy was not having iced coffee. He was enjoying his very hot, which honestly seems weird to me because the weather was pretty warm. Mr. Hot Crotch immediately whipped his head back in pain and shock, causing him to headbutt the girl behind him, who happened to be taking a sip of her own drink. Her face smashed into her cup, causing a second coffee explosion that completely soaked her lap and the notebook she was writing in. Honestly, I don't know if anything else happened, because by then I was getting the hell out of there. I immediately jumped into the car and yelled at the girlfriend to floor it like we were bank robbers in a heist gone wrong. The girlfriend was laughing so hard we almost wrecked on the way out of the parking lot. When we finally got home, it took her about 30 minutes to calm down from near hysterics as she roared with laughter. Later that evening, she shook her head in amazement, commenting that I was a walking Rube Goldberg-esque machine of destruction. I typically pick locations far from where we actually live to carry out these challenges, and now you know why. Alright, it was time for the last challenge, and the moment I read it, I declined it. Once more, it was simple, propose to the girlfriend, but of course, by whispering. Alright, that was something I definitely wasn't going to be doing. I think everybody knows our stance on marriage by now, but you know, maybe it's getting older, or maybe it's pressure from our parents, but sure, the idea of marriage doesn't seem so unnecessary anymore. Maybe it'd be nice to have a formal ceremony for a commitment that already exists in our hearts. But I wouldn't even cheapen it by proposing on a challenge that much is for sure. So, challenge failed. However, in typical infographic show plot twist style, the day after the challenges were over, the girlfriend opened an envelope she had received, with a check already written out for 5 k and a note from the producer saying they wanted us to be happy. I guess they were planning on paying for the challenge either way, or maybe this is their way of encouraging a wedding ceremony by paying part of the cost. Honestly, I wouldn't put it past my parents to have strong-armed the infographic show into trying to make a wedding happen. Matter of fact, I originally meant that as a joke, but now I think about it, it's terrifyingly realistic that my mother physically threatened someone at the show to make my last challenge a proposal so she could finally get the wedding she's been wanting for us. Alright, lots to think about, but before I go, remember to look out this summer for our first live footage challenge as I go hunt Bigfoot. Now, go watch Can't Use Hands for 72 hours or watch this other video instead.